Do you think I'm a good mummy? Yeah. Well, what do you think a good mummy is? What do you think a good mummy is? Mm -hmm. Like chewing gum. Like chewing gums. <laughs> I agree. Good mummies like chewing gums. Don't eat your snot. <laughs> I'm a writer and an actress. I've, I've um, done some TV shows. But more importantly, as they say, I am a mother <laughs> of two girls, age three and seven. I feel like I've got a, a gut instinct about how to mother, but then I'll see what some other mother's doing and I think, well, that looks better. I'm going to change everything and do what she's doing, and then I'll change back. And I, I just think I'm winging it a bit. But I think there's got to be mothers out there who are confident about what they're doing, who are, who aren't racked with indecision and doubt. And you know, I'd like to meet those mothers. Six mothers who each believe they are getting it right, although their methods are unusual. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> this you are, I'm impressed! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you son bitch, I'm gonna pick you over. <laughs> Six mothers who were generous and mental enough to let nosy old me tag along to find out if I can crack how to be a good... M-O-T-H-E-R. Mum. Madre. Mother. Mama, where'd you get that from? Staying at home and being there for your kids, being there all the time, every day, is what a lot of people think makes a good mother. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I admire stay-at-home mothers, I do, but I do find the idea of it a bit scary. I'm scared that I would start drinking before noon again and just eating pureed food, talking in rhymes, immune to the smell of baby shit. But maybe I'm wrong. To find out how it can work, meet my first mum, the mother of stay-at-home mothers. She's had six children, all by the age of 27, all home births and all homeschooled. You do get some people say, oh, you're just a housewife or you're a full-time mum. And they look at it like it's negative. But to me, I think that if you're a mum, you should be proud of it because I think your children are your, children are your gift to life, really. I've got six children. All the children's names are combinations between mine and my husband's names, Terry and Charlene. And their names are Tisha, Chatel, Charma, Sherry, Telsey, and Shanti. How old is uh, Tisha? Ten. Ten, eight. Charma, six. Sherry, she's five. Telsey, three. And Shanti, two. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Charlene and her husband Terry met, she's been pregnant and breastfeeding. That's 11 years. One. 16 and a half. I was pregnant there on the first one, actually. All six children are homeschooled by Charlene every day. Go on, then. on 10th April, 1912. Yeah. I homeschool, really, because when we had just one child, I just did not like the idea of detaching her at the age of four and a half and putting her in a school. We started doing just bits of learning together and she came on so well with the one-to-one. -one. I just thought, well, this is working. So I just carried on, carried on with her. And then obviously every child who come along, you just added one more, then added one more, and you just ended up with more homeschooled. Hi. Hiya. Hi. Hello. Is this school? Yeah. Hi. It's like our little classroom, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is this the school mistress? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. What are you nice <laughs> to meet you? You don't look like a school teacher. No. So how do you know how to teach? Basically, because I just get the pre-written textbooks. Right. Um, it explains to you on everything that you need to know really? how to teach them. I'd love to, you know, just sort of see how it works and yeah. uh, how you do it. I lucked out at school that day. It was my favourite subject, health and safety. Why is that unsafe? One at a time. One at a time. Me. No, not about the me. Tisha, why is that unsafe? Because it's on the edge of the table and it's going to fall off. Right, and what will happen? Yeah. Because that cup shows it's very hot. It's hot. very hot, isn't it? So if that falls, it will burn. It. Burn, yeah. How about this one? 
Why is that unsafe? Ted, no, I'm gonna hand the phone. Go on, Sharon. I just think he might be a bit depressed. Maybe that's why he's gone up there. Maybe he just needs him to talk him down. So it's safe to talk someone safety. down. He's just sitting to... on there. What would happen if he sat on there? Fall over. He could fall, he couldn't could, he? He could, he could drown in the river. He could, couldn't he? If he fell off that railing. So how do you know when they're that they're all at the level they should be at? Basically, Mommy. by following the national curriculum. Mommy. Right. I would never, in a million years, even remotely consider um, <laughs> teaching my yeah. my children. If you've got a baby and you've got a newborn baby, you're teaching your baby all the way along. Yeah. To sit, to walk, to crawl. Yeah. So I believe that parents are the best, best teachers for children, really. Yeah. You've taught well, even if you're a moron. <laughs> well, that's a hard one to ask me, isn't no, it? No, no, but, I mean, you, you wouldn't advise that. Well... I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Just because it was homeschooling, they don't miss out on field trips. They just take a trip out the back to the field. We were meant to be bird spotting, but I couldn't see any. Shall we just put wood pigeon down? Because there's going to be one. That's right, wood pigeon. We heard one. Put hearing, that bird hearing. On top of six kids and homeschooling, Charlene's found time to write a book. It's about her experiences being constantly pregnant and breastfeeding since the millennium. It's called Millenni Mum. Mille Millenni Mum. There, there's a whole um, chapter on breastfeeding. There is, yes. This picture here. <laughs> it looks like an infected pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, will ya? <laughs> I mean, there's some great photos in here. I was trying to show... I've got no stretch marks. Not even a one? No, none at all. And this was, like I say, this was just after... That was after Shanti. You know that after Shanti. you're not normal, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, people keep telling me that. Yeah. Sherry. She teaches all day. She's published a book. She also makes and sells her own stretch mark cream. But there is lots of products to come after this one as well. Oh, really? Because it seems like you're building a bit of an empire for yourself. Mm. If you start, think small, you're going to go small. So yeah. you just got to yeah. think big and then just see where it goes. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I'd love to be the next Johnson's. Johnson's? Bloody hell. You go, girl. At the moment, Charlene's global empire is more of a cottage industry. She makes the cream in the kitchen at night. How many ingredients are there? About seven. Seven? Yeah. No, eight, sorry. Eight. Yeah. I wasn't really interested in the number of ingredients. I was only interested in one thing. I Can I have a look at your belly? Do I have to? Yeah, no, no, you don't. You absolutely don't. It just looks so... Oh, my God. I don't, un I don't understand, Charlene. I don't know how. how. I genuinely think that if my stomach looked like that, I would be a much better mother. <laughs> <laughs> She'll need some more of that cream soon. That amazing tummy is being put to the test again. Charlene's pregnant with her seventh child. Charlene is one of those mothers who just utterly confounds me. I just don't think that I could, I could do that. I couldn't be surrounded by my kids all the time. She doesn't even get to pack them off to school. When does she find time just to sit around and be depressed, like all the other mothers? <laughs> Say good baking. Good baking. Maybe this woman's got the answer. She thinks she's cracked the work-life balance thing. She's what they call a mumpreneur who's created a home business based around her passion. Be warned. It's not cupcakes. That's because I'm in love with placentas. But um, <laughs> I think... That's the but... first time I've ever heard that <laughs> sentence. Oh, I remember being a new mum, like this lot. What a shock. I bought all the usual baby stuff, but there seems a hell of a lot more on sale now than back then. This shit's all over my pushchair. But the next mother I'm meeting thinks that all this baby crap does more harm than good. Modern day motherhood is formula, pushchair, and the cot in the next room. Basically, it's, it's like detach the baby as far as you can from the mother. Daria Robinson believes any detachment from the mother damages the baby. She's given up work to stay at home and calls herself a continuum mother. Baby needs to be carried around. That's what baby craves when it gets out of the womb. So why would I stick it in a cold cot? Why would I, why would I do that? Baby needs the warmth. 
of your body. Baby needs to feel part of you because it's not ready to go out into the world yet. Good morning, India. Daria, husband John, and 16-month-old daughter India have always slept in the same bed. It's a morning duck for India. Good morning. I think what's important to Daria is to be able to listen very, you know, very carefully to India and what India's needs are, rather than listening to what perhaps the world would say that India's needs are. Daria plans to breastfeed her daughter for as long as she wants it. And she even offers herself as a wet nurse to mothers who have problems breastfeeding. Yeah, she's loving it. I thought it would be difficult seeing my baby being breastfed by someone else, but it's not really as bad as I thought. It's, it's OK. Wet nursing is unusual, but Daria also doesn't believe in nappies. When her daughter's at home, she never wears one, even at night. You might think that sounds like weeing on the floor, but Daria calls it elimination communication. Elimination communication. The, this phrase was coined, it wasn't always called this because it didn't have a name, because it was done in the villages and in the cultures of, of yesteryear, and it was no problem. And, and women would sling their babies and they would pull them out just before they had to wee, because they knew from their intuition, and they never got wet. Yeah, well done, mothers of yesteryear. But how does that work for modern mothers? This building holds the secret of nappy-free babies. I'm off to sit in on Daria's elimination communication group, Worcester Branch. Hiya, yeah. how are you? Babies everywhere. If I look nervous, I am. I'm entering a room full of babies without nappies for an hour. I started this group because I didn't, there wasn't anything like this in my area. And I was like, I need some support and I need to talk with other people that are doing this. So I started this and slowly but surely it's growing. Because I know very, very little about it. Can you explain all the sort of elements of EC? As you're observing the babies, then you, you're, you're realizing what signal, what body language, if right. you will, that they give out when, before they wee or poo. Um, so we put them on the potty and we say, pss, 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 And that's for a week. Or if he wants to poo, it's, Poo, 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 poo. I mean, commonly people go like... Poo, 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 and he picks up the poo, poo sound, so if he needs a poo, sometimes go, he'll, he'll look for the potty and go... Yeah. So we know that. What I really am grateful for is that it's brought a level of attentiveness to their behaviour. You're looking for quite small signals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our son will just stop, he's mid-play, he'll just stop. All of a sudden you see a thought come into his mind and you catch it and then you're living very close with them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's brought me... It's bonding. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's it deepened amazing. our relationship it's because amazing. you have to keep their eyes on them a lot of the time. I've never used disposable diapers, I must say. Can I get an applause, please? Never, <laughs> ever. OK, I admit it, I was expecting a floor swimming with wee and poo, but that didn't happen. The children were under constant surveillance. It was intense. I think I may have gone to the potty a bit myself by the end of it. I wanted to know why Daria had such a problem with what most people consider to be normal mothering. It's the whole mentality of that's okay, and then, and then breast milk, ah, it's easier, just do formula, ah, and then it's just a lot, it's just, it's just like a, it's a chain reaction. In society, oh, make everything, make, make everything easier in technology, and, and nursery when they're three months old, and no, 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 and I'm just thinking you're creating a society that's just not gonna be very happy. I can see that you just, you, yeah. you, <laughs> You have, you know, a way you want to do things, and by God, you're going to do it. <laughs> I don't feel society appreciates the hard work that is being a mother. It's harder than anything. Everyone knows that, but they kind of pretend don't they don't know they it. Don't. Yeah, oh, I don't know well, if they do. Well, working mothers know that, by the way. Working mothers know that the majority of the time when they leave to go to work, that's, that's the easy bit. This is why I think a lot of women go back to work so soon, because it's easier. <laughs> Personally speaking, it wasn't because it was easier. Personally speaking, it's because I felt my brain felt like, you know that baby brain that you get that yeah. where you yeah. just, it really? feels like you can't speak, you know, I, I need to get that back. That's way of telling you, slow down. <laughs> it's a hormonal thing, it's so, to, so you stay at <laughs> home with your baby and take care of it. That's a mental, I mean, not mental, no, no, I've never no, thought about, about it, it like is, that. Imagine hormonal. if that was true. It is true. If nature messes up your brain, so you go, I cannot it's not go that. tour. It's that, you know, it's that you're being made to slow down so you're not running around and, and, and the baby's there left and, and being 
eaten by wolves in the old days or whatever, right? And to show that mothering never stops, India was communicating her need for elimination once again. Do you need a pee-pee party? Did you need to have a pee-pee party? How did you know she wanted to go there? Um, she's kind of acting like it, and it's been a while, so... Is this... Do you ever attract lots of cats when you're doing that? I know, right? And what do you do for a, a poo? I go... or She does it, too. Did you need a poopy? Did you scream? Even though my noise was way better than Daria's, I was never going to get a poo out of India. Daria is clearly fervent in her belief that mothers are getting it wrong in the toddler years. You can have a nice pee in peace now that we've all just got out of your hair. Thanks for having us in your home. Bye. But the next mother thinks it all starts somewhat earlier. Say good baking. Good baking. Linnea Shreve thinks good mothering begins from the moment right after birth and what you do with the actual after birth. When I pushed out my placenta, I grabbed a piece of it off and I put it in the inside of my gums. And uh, the midwife was like, wow, you're brave. <laughs> mm, brave, but also enterprising, as this inspired her to set up a home business. Yeah, we come and collect your placenta wherever you are, and then um, we would bring it to our house to make the capsules, so we wouldn't actually, unless you requested it. I believe that mums should use their placenta after birth, not throw it away, because it's nutritious, um, and it's full of growth factors, stem cells, um, and a right balance of hormones and nutrients and vitamins, especially formulated to the mum. So you have some, you have some. Linnea Shreef is a stay-at-home mum. She lives in Hertfordshire with her husband and two children, Sienna, five, and Roman, two. She calls herself a natural mum, and she distrusts conventional medicine, especially that aimed at children. Here's an easy solution to shut your kid up at night and let it go to sleep quickly. Here's an easy solution to get them to stop crying. This will stop their nose from running so you don't have to run around chasing after them with a tissue. And it, it's basically like, here, this will make your life easier. And it's like, being a mom is tough. It's not easy, you know, and you shouldn't drug up your kids just to make it easier for you. What? Not even on planes? But time to find out more about this placenta business. Business. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. What are you about to do? We are going to have a look at the placenta. We're going to make a placenta print. We are going to wash it up and get it ready to steam. And then once it's cooked, we're going to slice it up and put it on the food dehydrator for drying out. She defrosted a friend's placenta, especially for me. It's not carte d'or. It's a pint of gore. See, the cord is very red because it's been tinged with the blood from... Gosh, it's a lovely cord. What's lovely about it? That it fed the baby for nine months. No, I know it's lovely that it fed the baby. Yes. I just meant that what made it a different... What made its physical loveliness. Wow, this one has a real blood smell to it. Has just, it? It's got a richer smell to it. Much, like, really smells of blood. Right. Just be kind of stuck in the back. We yeah. started with a placenta print a service offered by Linnea. If I had a picture of my own baby's placenta print, mm. I would probably frame it and put it yeah. on my wall. <laughs> but that's just me, and that's because I'm in love with placentas. <laughs> but um, I think... That's but... the first time I've ever heard that <laughs> sentence. It does look sort of Tree of Life-esque, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. The placenta is the Tree of Life. Yeah, I said it first. OK. <laughs> As well as loving placentas, she also idealises natural birth, which always makes me feel a little uneasy. I get bothered by women who are sort of made to feel like they've missed out or feel bad because they haven't actually given birth, they haven't sort of experienced mm. giving birth, or they've had to have caesareans for whatever reason. And, and I just feel like a lot of mothers kind of judge that. I'm a caesarean baby, but, you know, I really do think that my mom and I, def we, we still haven't. We haven't had an emotional bond. Like, I love my mom to bits, and I spend a lot of time with her. But even still, I can't look her in the eye like I'm looking at you right now. 
Like, we feel funny and we have to look away. Yeah, but that can't, really you can't tell me that's because your mum had a cesarean. I don't know, but I don't know. I mean, that would be really upsetting for, for... That would be really upsetting for a, a woman who's had I'm a cesarean I'm not blaming it on the cesarean, but... If children are brought into this world and seeing a surgeon or, uh, you know, be, literally being cut open and ripped out of the womb, drugs and filled with drugs in their, in their bodies and in their blood, that's how they came into the world. There is a chemical imbalance in the mother's body and the baby's body when you, a baby is birthed by cesarean. I, I do know a, lo a lot of women who've given birth by cesarean who, as I'm far as I can see, on, on, yeah. on, you, you know, from an outsider looking in, they've, they've got perfect little relationships. But no time to chat. On with the placenta fun. Nothing is wasted, even the umbilical cord. The Nea makes them into charms. Are we going to get to see you make a charm out of that? Because that is going to be like magic. Yes. Because that, it ain't charming. What's that? Oh. Some women hang it like in the window. It's quite pretty. You can see the veins. Wow. The vessels through it. That would be a very specific woman who would hang up a I umbilical would've. cord Absolutely. in her window. Absolutely. Yes, well, you if are a very specific cords. woman. Mm. That's my husband. We're right in the middle of something at the moment. You can come home though, it's fine. I don't, tell him supper's not ready yet. But the main point of Linnea's business is cooking, drying, and grinding the placenta into capsules. She believes that the hormones from the placenta survive and can help mothers all through their lives, even into menopause. That sounds good. It's done. Right. God, I mean, it looks like a massive poo, doesn't it? A little bit. It really just looks like meatloaf. Yeah. It smells divine, does, I think. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Divine? Yeah. I feel sad that I didn't... That it, just to have a wasted placenta there. Just it's gone now. It's gone. They incinerate it. I feel like it's just another thing to feel crappy about. Well, I made, you, I can't made mourn, you can't mourn a lost placenta. I mean, I didn't do anything with my daughter. I can mourn a lost placenta if I want to. All right. Do you ever feel like you're getting it wrong? Do you ever criticise yourself as a mother? Because you don't. <laughs> well, that's just great. I mean, I'd love to be able to do that, but I will never, and I can hand on heart say, I'll never be able to do that. All right, long drive. I couldn't really yeah. believe that a new mother would want all those things made out of their placenta. But Linnea took me to meet Izzy, who'd given birth just the day before. Linnea had been hired to make a smoothie out of Izzy's placenta. There it is, fresh from the fridge. I was roped in to help. Lovely. What a lovely cord. Jesus, more mummy awful. So I'm just going to look for like a nice piece. Actually, that looks much darker. Yeah. So I'm going to take that piece there. So just take the meat off of it. Linnea believes that consuming the raw afterbirth, um, afterbirth, can help stem blood loss. You could drink it now. Do you want to drink it now? Yeah, I'll take my glass now. Okay. That tastes amazing. Like fruit. No, and no aftertaste? No. No undertaste? Well, nice, uh, a nice aftertaste of the fruit smoothie. Do you want to mm. try, do you want to try any? Huh? You could I, put your I, finger around the edge or something and try it. You can if you want, but you have to remember that that's her blood. Yeah. So we would ask Izzy first if she has any bloodborne diseases yes. and that kind of thing. Do you know thing. what? I'm going to... I'm going to... I wouldn't advise it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe her husband, her children, that's yeah. okay. But Thanks not. very much, though. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. I bumped you. Okay. I wasn't going to eat her placenta, but you know what? I think I would eat my own placenta if I have another baby because, one, I think I would have a really big, fat, juicy one, and two, I'm just very easily swayed. But I think, you know, I agreed with what Linnea was saying about natural childbirth and then avoiding caesareans, but it just annoyed me because it's just, it's another thing for mothers to feel bad about. But I've still got some more mums to meet, so I'm bound to discover the secret of motherhood from one of them. Like this lady, who thinks she's cracked the whole working mother thing, thanks to technology. His first poop. What could I do to be a better mum? 
Like, do you ever see anything that the other mums do that you just think, oh, I wish my mum did that? See us more often? See you more often. When you're at work? Oh. I love my job, but I had that horrible, crushing guilt that you feel when you leave your baby for a first time. It's just, it's shit. <coughs> I'm not about to become a stay-at-home mother. I just wish there was someone out there who could help me be a better working mother. I don't play the wishing game. I play the managing expectation game. Oh yeah, like her, she's good. Fiorella Rietti was born in Honduras and now lives in London with her husband and two-year-old son, Aiden. She is not like me, she is super organized. She uses technology to micromanage her life as a working mother. Yes, I have a nanny and I work. I always send a text or call the nanny once or twice a day. She knows that every day she needs to send a picture or a video of Aiden. I have a to-do list and I write them down in my phone really quickly and it just syncs up automatically. And when I go into my computer at work, I open up my laptop and it's right there, my to-do list. All these different types of technologies you have now, why don't you use them in raising your child? Fiorella works in an American digital agency and schedules a video conference with her two-year-old every day at lunch. He's really wanting to chat today. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Ojito. Ojito? Ojito means sweet eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is too cute. Some people would say, how is five, a five minute sort of chat of work and life balance if you're doing 13 hour days, you know? You know what? At least I had those five minutes with my son and I, I feel that I'm a mother. I'm not just a work, working person that don't, don't have anything else besides yeah. job. And... The only way I seem to be able to make it work is just by going at 100 miles an hour all the time and never ever having any time to just take a breath, you know? You seem really calm and together and <laughs> you don't have any shit on your jacket and you don't look oh, like yeah. <laughs> you look like you've washed your hair this morning and I have now a ten minute shower. I don't do my hair. I, I pick three days out of the week to do my hair. Right. Um, I have a bag of makeup that I always have outside my room that I do my makeup on the go. I have a certain type of breakfast style during the week, which is easier to eat than other type of breakfast. And on the what weekends breakfast is easier to eat. <laughs> like for example Cereal takes a long time. Cereal takes. So hang on. <laughs> cereal takes a long time. Cereal takes a long time. What, does, what takes what takes less time than cereal? Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you have a to-do list for everything. Yeah, I'm saying yeah and agreeing with you. Like but, I've ever done a to-do list. I've never I've never done a to-do list. I've never. But, do you, written, but in your head, it's a to-do list, right? My in my head, there's a to-do scribble of shit. But there's no there's no list of with any order oh, or no, or numbers. Everything is written. It will be taken care of. And now I just have to concentrate on what's important. I get to join in the highlight of every working mother's day, seeing your child after a day at work. Do you still get that excited little knot in your stomach when you see him? It's great, isn't it? I love it. I'm just like yay. <laughs> <laughs> As much as I was enjoying this hug, I knew it was time for my working mother masterclass to start at the Blackboard. First, it's not a board. It's not a board? It's a communication platform. Oh, okay. I know. It's a weird name, but it's... The, okay, so the reason behind it was that we needed a, a board or something that is just for everybody to see. What's this June. number? So this is our budget. Supermarket uh -huh. and expense, like weekly expenses. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we're negative. We're zero. Oh. There's no money. Well, it's Friday, so... No, no, no. This has to last until Sunday. The week oh. starts... I've got a blackboard. So I'm going to write something on it. Like eggs. Apart from the 15,000 photos on her laptop and the 3,000 on her phone... This first poop. She's also the queen of baby apps. So I have a baby guide and I'll do the baby guide. That's how I know that right now he's going to be going through a growth spurt. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We have one that's called Shapes, Toddler Fun, I Play and Sing, which is really nice because he sings. Mm. Um, animals, baby animals, baby brain, baby year three, baby year two, mum's net. 
TT Spanish, ELC Flashcards, Top Sh uh, Tiny Chef, Baby Safety, Parenting, Parenting Number Two, Play and Music, and Ocado. Oh, I'm just gonna have a little sleep here. Just for a minute, like. Can I sleep too? No, you keep talking because we're making a documentary. For God's sake. <laughs> well, I stopped listening to you for a Do I talk a lot? A minute and a half ago. <laughs> They say I talk a lot. <laughs> but you think it works. I mean, you, you know it works. You've got a great little oh, boy. But for work. you, for you, it, it works. It because has, you, yeah. man you, ma you manage your life to within an inch of its life. Yeah. So this is one thing I do every day. Be happy today. Today at 18.30, be happy. That makes me think you're a bit nutty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big hug. She's got too many apps. Any any idiot can see that. But you know, <laughs> they 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 seem to to make her calm. My life seems to be just full of panic and you know rushing from one thing to the next and and just sort of feeling overwhelmed all the time and and not even you know there's a portion of my brain that I can't even tap into because it's just shouting too many scary things at me and, and maybe if I turn those scary things into a list and take them off cross them out day by day, maybe that would go. If lists scare me, and they do, that's nothing compared to the thought of my daughters becoming teenagers. I just really want them to like me. How am I going to protect my children when they grow up and, and start to break away from me? And how am I going to talk to them about condoms and broken hearts without laughing or crying? <laughs> Amy Vaness has a 14-year-old son, Harry. She takes protective to a whole new level. Harry's my main thing. He was inside me for nine months, he's mine, and he will always be mine. Before remarrying, she was a single mother for 11 years. Eat nicely, you. I'm so protective, I won't let him out. I will let him out, but... It's got to be to the cinema or swimming. I won't let him just hang out on a street corner. I have to check with the mums that they all know they're all going. I have to drive from there at a certain time and pick him up. I'm really strict on it. She is also dreading Harry's teenage hormones kicking in. What is Harry doing? Harry! If he talks about sex, I get embarrassed. Which I find really funny that I can't talk about if he says something about stiffies or something like that, I get, I can't, it makes me feel sick. And I think I'm quite open-minded. I'll show, I'll show you my knickers, shall I? Look, there's a pair, that's really, look at them. A little zip there. That's really, that's, that's, that's too small, I won't wear them. Do everything hangs out on them ones? Amy is a dancer in a London nightclub. It's not your normal workplace, but then, as she says, I'm not your normal mum, am I, really? Right. I'm going to wear this today. This is quite... That's tame. nice. Tame yeah. for me. It's very tame. <laughs> nice boobs, by the way. I'm assuming they're fake. Do they look fake? Well, no, they don't... Well, yeah, they do. They look like they've got a bit of... I can talk to you. I don't know why I'm just doing this. So will you give me a tour of... The club. You've been to a strip club before? I have been to a strip club, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. But not oh. um, one of this sort of um, okay. size okay. or, um, I was going to say girth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Have you ever been on a pole before? No. Some guys go right to the top and spread their legs right on the but I don't do any of that. Wow. Like, if you're right. trying to do like trying to be like a monkey climbing up yeah. it, it's not very sexy. That's what I would do. No, you've got to be sexy be like and slow. I'd be like, I can get to the top, motherfucker. <laughs> do you want to have a go? See how far you can get. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. <laughs> this way. You're unimpressed. Go on. <laughs> Don't fall. I am really impressed, Sharon. Even I can't do that. Ta da! Yeah, you did give me a bit of a helping hand there. That's good. Oh, God. It's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. I'm assuming that a lot of the mums know what you do. I don't care what people think. It's, it hasn't done me and Harry any harm. Yeah. It's given Harry everything he wants in life. I've been a single parent supporting him for 
Yeah, he's got everything he's, he's never gone without anything. At least I'm not signing on, you know, or I'm not taking, I'm working. I'm supporting my son on my own. I wanted to meet Amy with Harry to see how their relationship worked. Harry was a classic teenager, shy, skeptical of adults. She was the classic mum, really embarrassing. Really? Oh my goodness, there it goes. It's not that embarrassing, is it? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't know who that is. Uh, it's not good when it goes off in parents' evening, is it? So that embarrasses him, but... Yes. Um, yes. It's a text message. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Since he was already mortified, I might as well pile in with the embarrassing questions. Did you go looking for girls? <gasps> Don't say that. Like, so I'm not <laughs> listening. <laughs> well, you're 14, aren't you? Who would be your ideal woman, then? She's Cheryl Cole. <laughs> <laughs> So girls like Cheryl Cole, would you go out with a stripper? No. <laughs> so you don't think that your, your mum has sort of given you an idea of what you think women should look like and, you know, uh, fake tanned and high heels yeah, and hair extensions? I wouldn't go out with women with, like, fake tan. It's not real, real is, is it? Like, girls with, like, all this plastic surgery, it's not real, real is it? It's not what they're really like. They look what? nice, though. Yeah. Maybe they looked better when they weren't, like that. OK. So, Harry, will you give us a look at your room? Yeah, sure. OK. Do you want to show me it now? OK. Sure, sure. Do you need to check if there's any pants on the floor or anything? No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, give me a look then. This is not what I expected. This is a very tidy room. <laughs> Do you think um, you'll be a bit sort of loath to bring to introduce her to girlfriends oh. and stuff like that because she's so full on about or she's so yeah i i am quite n nervous about like bringing a girl back she can't even think about it can she the thought no. of it <laughs> i don't know where where are I, I should take a girl back <laughs> why do you think she's so protective of you you never know who's out there it really yeah there's, there's some weird people about yeah are you looking forward to coming out from under her wing when i move move out I think I'm going to struggle, like, doing the water washing, like, making the house t t tidy and that. Well, yeah, but listen, here's the good news. Yeah. You won't have to keep your house tidy. She'll come round and, like, she clean won't. it. She won't come round. You can just throw your shit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Amy has chosen to be the kind of mother that all teenagers, I think, would love to have in almost all respects. She does everything for him, but she's just decided to monitor his every move as well. So, you know, that works for her and, and he seems fairly happy with it. She's also the kind of mother who doesn't care what the other mothers in the school ground think. She's got a great relationship with them. They're proper friends and they seem to really like each other. Oh, mothers can't help being protective. It's a flesh and blood thing. But what if they weren't your own kids? Prepare to meet the wicked stepmother. I have never wanted to have children and I've always found children slightly creepy. Who is the best mummy at making mango hedgehogs? You are. Thanks. Are you allowed to eat the skin or is it your kid? You can eat the skin if you want to be on the toilet all night. <laughs> making boobies. I think that the maternal bond is nature's big trick of making you love something that uh, shits on you or punches your tits or is a, a moany, psycho little bastard most of the time. I can't imagine what it would be like to have to look after or love a kid that I wasn't related to. Ima imagine having to look after a kid who didn't want you around or, or thought that you were the problem. How would you deal with being the wicked stepmother? I have never wanted to have children and I've always found children slightly creepy. This is Antonia Pugh Thomas. She's a qualified stunt woman. 
But her main occupation is a couture dress designer. She started her own business 20 years ago with just 200 quid and a borrowed sewing machine. I'm going to undo it again because you see this bit here, this needs to be actually central with your cleavage. Can you see, if you look down, it's slightly off. All of a sudden I got married and I just, I didn't just marry my husband, I married his two children too. So I then acquired two stepchildren and then as I got married, I also became pregnant and I now have my own daughter as well. So having come from being a woman who had no interest in children and no desire to spend any time with children, I'm surrounded by them. And here they are, Antonia's instant family. 19-month-old Teresa, stepchildren Emily, 12, and Sam, who's eight. So I am Sam and Emily's wicked stepmother. The wooden salad servers, please, out of that drawer. Yeah. I'm very comfortable with being a wicked stepmother, a WSM. If they're on my patch, that's, they're my rules. They live one life with their mum, they live a different life with me, and that's fine. Having her own baby was a shock, but then she realised she had something to compare it to. It's not different, that different to having a dog, because I've communicated for over a decade with a creature who can't speak. But I know exactly what she wants, exactly what she's thinking, whether she's sad, happy, angry, hungry, thirsty. You learn all those things, and it's just like that with a baby. These are amazing. Antonia, I didn't realise that you uh, designed them as well. I thought oh, it was your you. store. Yes, no, that's what I do. That is what you do. I can see I your name on I designed and make them, and I made a dress for somebody who got married on the back of an elephant. Right. And I make dresses for people who get married in St Paul's Cathedral. Oh, I love posh people. I think a lot of women feel that they will, their lives will become more fulfilled if they have a baby. I was not one of those people. Mm. I was, uh, you know, running a full-time business. I was training to become a stunt woman. I had a dog. I rode a motorbike. I loved my life. I had masses of friends. I did not need a baby. I was fine having the baby. I hatched the baby. And the minute she came out, she was put on my stomach, and I just said, hello, friend. And it was just brilliant. And I love her more as each day goes by. Yeah. And it's, I find her... Very interesting and very good company. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. But I, but I, I love how you talk about I your baby. I do find her really Hello, interesting. Hello, friends. <laughs> You're she... interesting. <laughs> but I know, but I do find her really interesting. <laughs> she is my friend. <laughs> good girl. Uh, see you later, friend. Bye-bye. Do, do, do you notice how, the difference between how you, you treat your, you know, flesh and blood baby and your stepchildren? No. I don't think I treat them any differently. Really? Yeah, I really don't. That's kind of odd. I know that's odd, but I I believe passionately in being fair. I didn't meet the children. It was very deliberate not to meet the children for quite a long time. And then I did meet them. And I was actually feeling quite nervous. And Emily looked at me. Emily was eight at this point. She just said, she looked me up and down. She said, I really would have hoped that Daddy would find a girlfriend who looked more like Barbie. And I thought, <laughs> And yeah. Sam, age three, just looked at me and went, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Sam said no to stepmum a lot over the years, especially about food, which became a long-running battle. We probably had the biggest row over peas, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, three peas. I remember you three were peas. Dying three peas. And now there is. <gasps> to, to get three peas eaten, oh, how, lo how long did it take? About... How long did it take, Sammy? An hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> Approximately an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> We just sit here until it's eaten. Mm. So I will sit and read a newspaper if I have to. Mm -hmm. Jesus, better get these peas down me. <laughs> Having a stunt woman for a stepmother does make life more interesting. Out of the house, she's equally no nonsense and, as you might imagine, not really one for wrapping her kids in cotton wool, like a lot of us do. Me. Um, yes, Where we are, love that. Yeah. Where's her helmet? I don't do helmets. You don't do helmets? I don't do helmets. What? Seriously? You no, know, no, no, completely seriously, because in fact, if this bike comes down, she'll actually, her head won't get clonked um, because it will be protected by the handlebars. But what if, what if the bike gets hit or, you know, what, what if, if there's the an accident? Gets, or... If the bike gets hit, I think I'd probably get hit first. Probably. Yeah. I think she'd be all right. When I first met you guys, you guys used to, excuse me, you guys used to wear helmets, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And then I never I suggested... Didn't. But then I didn't suggest yeah. that you didn't at all. In fact, I'm sure I remember saying early on when you said, could you, yeah. could you take a helmet off? I said, no, because I, I, yeah. Mummy would want you to wear one. And, I asked <laughs> she said it was and then you asked Mummy and she said it was all right. 
ultimately, decisions like that have to be made by their parents. That does make Eddie me a bit nervous one. seeing her with that helmet. Don't worry, we'll be fine, I promise you. Should we go? I'm trying to be calm cycling here, but all I'm thinking is don't crush the baby, don't crush the baby. I wanted to ask you about the whole style of mothering that you've chosen to do, which mm. is risk-taking and... Well, I don't think it's so much risk-taking, but it's letting them find their own way and encouraging them to be quite physical. Because you didn't think you were going to be a mother. No. Definitely don't want to be the kind of mother who is a, what they call a helicopter mum. Do you know that saying? Mom. It's um, uh, the mothers who kind of are always hovering over, always, you know, waiting for I something think that, to go. But I think that's because I absolutely hate it if people do that to me. And I can never remember a time when I haven't hated that. So if people mm. are always watching over me or always... It drives me completely potty. I'm like, give me a bit of space. Mm. I think it's a very unhelpful thing. When you see parents mollycoddling their kids, I often think it's much more for the parent than it is for the kid. Kids are tough. Mm. And kids are pretty resourceful, too. I have this overwhelming urge to tip you over. Oh, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Antonia is great, real stuff and nonsense, but she is a risk taker because that's her way of showing her kids not to be afraid of life. Although, I don't know, put a helmet on your baby. I am definitely 100% more confused having met those mothers. I love their conviction. They're all convinced that they're doing the right thing and, and that's great. Well, I would take a few things away from it. I'm going to stay a working mother, obviously, but I'm going to get more organised. I'm going to, I'm going to make a to-do list. I wouldn't homeschool, no way. But I might take more risks with my kids. You know, I would be so <gasps> when they fall, I'll just be like, jolly good fall, dog. Get up, eat your peas. And if I have another baby, I am going to eat my placenta because maybe it would fill that missing part of me. And uh, maybe I'll have another baby, because babies are great, aren't they? They are great. I might put that on my to-do list. That'll go at the top. Actually, I must make that to-do list. I'm going to put the baby thing on the to-do list. Mm -hmm.